Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to Jekyll Bait Company. This is Jen. I'm with you this afternoon. It is pouring on and off outside, so we're not fishing today. But we are here in the workshop. It's a Saturday afternoon. And um, we're sitting here at the PC because uh, I've got a subscriber challenge and I'm really excited about it. I've been meaning to get this video out to you guys. Um, you might remember months and months ago, I did how to paint a, a crankbait if you don't have an airbrush. Now everybody knows that I, that's what I do for a living. I paint crankbaits and I did a very basic pattern. It was a blue and an orange pattern, almost kind of looks like this one, um, but it was without an airbrush. I called it an Okeechobee orange and I was done with it. So I get a, a question and Ian, thank you so much for asking these questions because it makes me happy. I'm glad that you guys are watching these things. If you're a young angler or you're experimenting, you're just starting out, there's nothing more rewarding than catching a fish on a lure or a fly that you've either tied or painted yourself. But not everybody can afford an airbrush, so what do you do? So Ian asked me, hey, could you show us how you would paint a bluegill which is a you're going to get background noise i'm sorry it was fedex um you're ha, can you show us how to paint a bluegill because that's a more complicated pattern so i started scratching my head it's like huh i don't think i've ever really tried to paint a bluegill with fingernail polish because that's basically that's the biggest thing that you can use it's inexpensive there's tons and tons of colors so we're going to try that today, and I haven't tried it before, so you guys are going to go through this attempt with me, trial and error, um, and let's see what we can come out with. So the first thing, number one, number one, number one, get an image. Now, I have a laptop here with me, and I've printed out an image. We're going to go get that image, and we're going to put it over by the, uh, the workbench so that we can take a look at it while we're painting. And again, this is a fairly basic pattern. Um, but one thing, if you don't have a laptop and you don't have a printer, you can go to a library and get a book on sunfish, and there's some really good stuff out there um, that you can kind of look. Now, you want to be careful if you have a library book. Obviously, you don't want to muck it up with, you know, fingernail polish or whatnot. So I've chose some fairly basic colors. We've got the oranges, and that's the male. Mail truck is going to keep going by. There he goes. Bye bye. Hopefully, we won't have too many interruptions. And again, I apologize if there's background noise. But I've got some pretty basic colors. Um, and we're going to start with your orange underneath and your blue over top. It's not going to look exactly like this. But the, the, the principle behind a, a bluegill is you have two basic colors. Okay, you don't have to worry about the fins because if you guys look at these crankbaits, there's no fins on this particular type of crankbait. And this is a square bill. Um, you guys are going to see those pretty commonly. But um, if you have an old lure, we're going to come out to the old lure pile. These are from Pickwick Lake. And we're just going to pick one. I'm just going to grab this because it looks like I don't have to do much sanding. Um, this is what we're going to use. So this has already got eyes on it, and yours might already have eyes on it. There's not much that we need to do to prep this, but one thing I am going to do is I'm going to try and protect the eyes with just a little bit of tape. Okay, and you'll see what I'm going to do here. Okay, now we're actually going to pull the excess tape that we don't need. We're going to pull that off. Um, now for that, what I'm going to be using is an X-Acto knife. Okay, if you are young and you need to get parents permission or you don't have an X-Acto knife, you can use a, another type of a knife. Um, you can use a steak knife. But these X-Acto knives are very accurate. It's pretty quick. You can just pull that excess tape right away and you'll see there you have it. You've got some protection over the eye. Now this way you don't have to go out and buy them. And this is just a, a real basic way to get around an extra few steps. 
Now, if it were me and I were using the airbrush today, I would go ahead and pull these eyes off and I would put brand new ones on um, because everything gets sprayed. So now we have our extra tape off. Let's go ahead and run my thumbnail across that and protect that as best we can. So now you have a little bit of tape. You got a little bit of protection. You're going to put this back on the top of your X-Acto knife and we're ready to start our bait. So I'm not going to paint over top of this picture. We're going to set the picture right next to where we're going to be working. And again, you don't really have to worry about the fins. You just want to get this basic pattern down. Okay. And we're going to keep that right there just for reference. Make sure we throw our trash away. Um, you can see I've got a couple of things drying here. I did these with an airbrush this morning and it made me remember that I had gotten a subscriber challenge on my channel. So again, thanks for the subscriber challenges. Keep them coming. Let's see. We're either going to do okay or we're going to go down in flames, but we're going to do it together. So now we're ready to get started and we'll be right back. Ready to get started. Uh, my allergies are kicking in. They have been all week. I don't know if you guys have watched the last video that I just put out, um, but it sounds like I have some severe cold or sinus infection. I don't. It's just allergies. Um, the breathing is going to be affected by that. It's the story of my life. I've had sinus problems since I was a kid, so bear with me on that one, y'all. So we're going to shake this up. And you guys are shaking with me. Ha ha ha. And the blending is going to happen wet on wet. It always does. But we're going to do about half and we're going to go right underneath the eye and we're going to put on this orange. And it's spreading pretty easy and it's going to spread pretty fast. Now you notice that I have the workshop door modified. I work in my garage so I've got the, I've got the door up because fingernail polish smells much much worse than the airbrush materials that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I do have a venting system for it, but if you don't want your house or your garage or wherever it is that you're going to be working to smell like a beauty salon, then I suggest being uh, in as open air situation as you possibly can. The only thing that you need to remember with that, folks, is that when you do that, your nail polish is going to dry a whole lot faster. Now, when I say we need this to dry, that's true. Uh, we do want this to be dry. Now, if you don't have a hair dryer and you don't have a bunch of helping hands like this, um, you can go ahead and leave it just like that. Matter of fact, let's recoat. We want this to be as even as possible. And we don't want a whole lot of lumps. We want to try and follow the contours of this bait. Now I believe this is a red-eyed shad, which is an, a Strike King bait. Um, for the purposes of doing this, this is just kind of the first thing that we picked. But um, there we go. Now we've got that orange on there. And we're going to sit here and wait until this dries. We don't need to show you that on camera, so we're going to come back after this is dry. We're going to flip it over and do the orange base on the bottom side of the bait coming back and we're doing the other side same color you may notice that I've got some little alligator clips here I uh, you can buy them by I believe the box is a hundred it's pretty inexpensive um, and it does come in very very handy when you're working with things like this. Now you don't have to be precise. Nobody's saying you have to be 100% precise. Um, even patterns in nature aren't always 100%. But you kind of want to look on your other side and see how far you painted and then try and match it up as best you can with the same color. Why all the nail polish, Jen? Well, I am a girl. Um, 
I get my toes did all the time, especially in the summer. So I do have a lot of colors. Um, Walmart is my number one go-to for all things nail polish. They have really inexpensive prices. And for this, eh, you probably really only need three colors. Um, I happen to have a bunch of nail polish. Imagine that. Um, so we are going to do a couple of other colors as accents. But here's the thing. When we're talking about a bluegill, and we're thinking about how basic we can do this to make it look right, we're going to do three things. We're going to have the orange. We're going to have our blue up top with some green accent. And then we need to have our lines. Now we're also probably going to do a little bit of glitter on this as well. Um, you can buy nail polish that has glitter in it, but it really isn't super, super necessary. The glitter that I'm choosing for this is going to be red and gold. Also a Walmart purchase comes just like that. So I think that's two fifty three dollars at the most so sure you can go out you can buy a brand new Strike King lore for about six bucks seven dollars or you can have fun and experiment for probably ten or fifteen dollars that's what it's gonna cost um, you have to start out with something it can be an old lore that you have it can be one that you found uh, you can do a lot of experimenting on it so, and I'm pretty much just filling space while this is drying. So, we're going to turn the camera off again. We're going to let this dry. And we're going to come back and we're going to be doing the blue on top. Now, I'm doing a lighter blue. This shows a pretty dark blue. So, I'm going to be doing this color blue, which is a good bit lighter. Uh, you might be able to see it in this accent color right through here. Now that we have our orange on and it's dried, both sides are dry. So now we're going to come back and we're going to give it a little bit of light blue. Sort of like a Caribbean blue. And remember we've got this tape on for a reason. Protecting the eyes. So instead of making circles around it, let's go ahead and paint straight lines across and over it. Just want to get it as even as you can. reason that I picked these particular colors, aside from the fact that I already had them, was that it should be fairly visible on this camera. We'll find out when I go to edit this how we did with the color choices. Now we're going to go ahead and do one side and then let it dry just like we did with the orange but with these uh, with these lipless the flat on this forehead you can pretty much go ahead and get with the first side that you do up top just you don't have to be super careful but you don't want to get it on the alligator clips So now, as we bring this around, bring it back into the light, you can kind of lift it up a little bit easier with these clips too. Now you can use a paper clip. Um, most people have paper clips laying around. And if you guys are in school, then you probably have access to a paper clip. Or if you have an office, if you work every day, 
paper clips are easy to get a hold of. I just happen to have alligator clips, so that's what we're using for the purpose of this video. So I just want to get to the point where it's even. And you don't want to keep going over it and going over it because this dries fairly quickly, especially since we have this roll up open and it will air dry. Now it's humid and it's fairly tacky outside. So one thing that I am doing off camera is I'm heat setting this just a little bit. Um, just using a regular old hair dryer. Also a pretty common household item. So we have one side done. Fairly even. We're going to leave it like that. We're going to let it dry and then we're going to come back and finish off this other side. Now you can probably hear that it's a little bit tacky still on the other side. I did heat set it a little bit and that's going to help. But again, you want to be careful and give it plenty of time to dry before you do the, the second side. Just a helpful tip. So we're going to go ahead and finish this. And then when we're ready for our next step, we'll shoot the camera back. All on. right, we've got both sides dry to the touch. So now the next step is we take a look at our pattern again. Notice there's a little bit of white through here, just a little bit. Now we're following this pattern. So and there's a little bit of white on the face. So there's a couple of things you can do and we're just going to try get some excess paint off of the little bristle brush that's in here. You don't want to overdo this part but it will stand out. Just put a few dots and these represent scales. They can be random placed. And get into the uh, orange as well. And when you dip back in, come out, get that excess off of there. You don't want big drops of this. You just want a little bit just to accent. And there you go. You want it to kind of look like that. Again, you're just kind of representing scales. Maybe just a little bit on the face. And then we're going to let this dry and do the other side. Get it as close to this pattern as we can on the other side. All right, now we're looking at the next step. So you can take any ordinary paper and do this. It's not essential to do it with any particular type of paper. But you're going to want to represent the gill section here. get rid of this. Now what I've done here now if you have any sort of tack left on this polish it's gonna stick. So what you guys are gonna do is get a small can of black spray paint or dark green but preferably black because that makes the most sense so get a can of spray paint and we're going to spray paint just the edge of that gill and here's where our comb comes in. We're going to take this comb, we're going to represent 
these lines like you'd see in a bluegill. All right, we're going to heat set this a little bit. on the helping hands because that's going to help it dry just a little bit but remember on the masking and when you when you give it that overlay with this comb and your spray paint you want to have it down on this piece of paper because you don't want to be moving this comb at all you want to actually physically lay that on top of the bait with your mask over it just like we did okay the mask will be on top of it so you'll have one free hand and just spray that evenly. Now it's real hard to control if it's just standard Krylon. It's real hard to control how fast it comes out. So you want to hit it real light. You don't want too much. And we almost got a little bit too much paint on this. But you can see the lines are all consistent. Um, that's what you want, basically. So there's a couple more steps that we're going to do. Um, we're going to heat set this one more time on both sides with a hair dryer uh, in the house. And then we're going to come back out. I'm going to put a little bit of glitter on it and then we're going to put a little bit of probably just the gold glitter and then when it dries we're going to seal it. Put everything, it's dry to the touch. Okay, the next step, I'm going to use a little bit of this glitter just in the in the blue and we're going to run this over the whole bait with that tape on the eyes. And that's going to give it a little bit of extra shine when it's in the water. Especially have, if you have stained water, if you got a local home pond, it gets muddy this time of the year with all the rain in the spring. Never a bad idea. And we're going to finish this in the direction of the stripes. Never a bad idea to have a little extra glitter just so the fish can see. Now, I've got this on helping hands, so I can do both sides at the same time, but same principles we've been using before. If you don't have helping hands, you can lay one side down flat on your, on your paper, and then heat set it, let it dry before you do your second side. The worst thing you can do is try and work on both sides while this stuff is still wet and tacky. It, it's going to ruin your whole, your whole bait. So don't do that. And we can, we can throw an ample amount of glitter on this. Not going to hurt a thing. And just run that down both sides of the bait put a little bit extra on top and then generally your fish are probably going to be going deep in the summer so you're going to want to throw a little bit on the bottom as well just enough to coat it but you want to, if there's any lumps, because this has got some fairly thick glitter in it, so if there are any lumps, you want to go ahead and smooth those out with this little application brush as best you can. Now we're starting to look like a bait. I'm going to take this out in the sunlight. Now this is going to have to, well, it's not really sunny today. All right, you've got your defined cheek eyes are going to pull. We're going to pull that tape off. Let this dry. And there you go. The only thing that's left to do now is we're going to pull the tape off of the eyes and we're going to clear coat it. We're going to clear coat it with nail polish because if we try to put a epoxy over this acrylic lacquer, it's just going to turn to mush. 
it's going to crack it's going to be gooey you don't want that at all you want to be consistent with whatever materials you guys are using um, just to, just to stay with that clear finish okay so now we're at the point where we need to take this off we're going to take the tape off of the eyes and we want to do that before we put the final coat of clear coat on because we want the clear coat to bond with anything that's in the corners of these eye sockets here and with any luck we'll be able to get this tape off fairly cleanly at least that was our hope now that doesn't look bad now you can clean this up with the knife um, I use a little Swiss Army knife for just about everything uh, I've got tons of knives I don't even want a knife that's that sharp working with this Swiss Army is just fine for the purpose um, and I also am not going to use my exacto knife on this either because that's going to be too sharp and it's going to leave scratch marks on the eye. Now this eye is old. Remember this is a bait that was donated out of Lake Pickwick, uh, which I greatly appreciate. And I, I get those from time to time. People will drop off stuff because another thing that I do um, with some of these repaints is I donate it to underprivileged children so that they can be hooked on fishing, not on drugs. Um, it's a really great project that Arkansas has, and if you have something like that in your state too, whether you're a painter or just an angler, it's always good to find a charity and a cause that fits your needs. So let's try and get this off in the same fashion we did on the other side get it off as clean as we can it's going to be a little bit tacky because we have several coats of polish on here but as you can see it looks pretty decent so that's all the junk coming off of there and then just kind of go back around and clean up any of this excess goo that might be in these corner sockets and once you've accomplished that then again it doesn't have to be perfect and that's one thing you have to remember with this it's not an airbrush is is it going to turn out like this stuff is nope it's not but you're not going for perfect you're going for function and you're also going because if you're an artist or if you want to experiment like i said at the beginning of the video there's nothing better than catching a fish on something that you've created. And these are not perfect baits by any means. They're not gonna be perfect. But this is one approach. Now, if you guys are watching this and you're like, hey, I wanna do this different. I wanna try not using an airbrush and using all spray paint. Or if you have, you know, cans of Krylon and you have your properly ventilated. Now with the spray paint that I used earlier, the Krylon, again, I had the roll-up door. I had plenty of ventilation. And if it had been a sunny day, I would have even done that outside. I wouldn't have done that right there on the, on the workbench. Uh, it's a little bit different with an airbrush than it is with Krylon. And, it, and the smell stays with you a little bit longer. Hey, that could be one of the reasons that I still have sinus problems. Who knows? So now we've gotten the majority of this clean. I see just a couple more spots of goo that I want to get off of the eye. And now that we have this cleaned up, the last step is to clear coat the entire thing. And as Ian pointed out, in, uh, in a message that I just got from him on YouTube, nail polish can be expensive, especially when you're young, if you don't have a job, um, or you're not working yet. So let's, let's see what you guys think about this. I want to know in the comments below how you would approach making a homemade bait if you don't have an airbrush and you're not using nail polish. Or maybe you do just one basic bait in one color and then some other ideas so get creative with this let's see where you are let's see how that how you would approach this now you notice immediately when this clear coat goes on that red eye 
that famous Strike King red-eyed shad gets a lot clearer. So we're going to be pretty uh, plentiful in the layer that we put on this. Just spread that around and then we're going to give this plenty of drying time. Matter of fact, what I would recommend with the clear coat folks is that once you're at this stage and you've painted all your layers and you've done all of your accents that you're going to do on the bait, let it dry for about three days before you even think about fishing it. Even a week. Those fish will be there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the finished product. This is a reclaimed red-eyed shad, Strike King original, that was reclaimed out of Pickwick Lake. It had pretty much no paint on it to begin with. Did a little bit of scraping, got just a little bit of mud off, um, took the split rings off, and then uh, I accepted and worked the do not use an airbrush YouTube challenge sent in to me from subscriber Ian Tweedy. Thank you so, so much. It was a great challenge. I have passed that on to other airbrush artists. Let's see who responds. Um, if you are an airbrush artist and you want to take part in the challenge, give us your best bluegill without an airbrush. Let's see what you get. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see you out on the water.